So let's go ahead and call a meeting to order. Everybody okay with that? It is now 6.04. And um, do we need to do roll call um, since we have everybody here? We've got Cindy, Noah, Aaron, Holly, Peter, Eileen, Angela, Randy, who's on the beach where I wanna be, uh, Susan, Pamela, Marsha, everybody okay? Um, Angela, will you determine if we are at quorum? I think we are now. We are. Excellent. We That's are good. at quorum, yes. Thank you. Good. All right. Um, from my understanding, do we have, or I shouldn't say this, my understanding is we do not have public invited to be heard. Is that the case? We invited the public and they decided not to be heard. So we're good to move on. All right. Um, additions, corrections of the August 20th meeting from our minutes. Cindy Tiger. I only have one, which is number nine. The motion was made by Laurel. It has a second from me, but it didn't say who the first was. So that's the only hey. thing. Hey, that's Everything better. else looked great to me. And there are minutes, not an agenda this time. Yes. Good job. And let's clarify, who do we have taking minutes tonight so we can be um, cautious? Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Um, just we want to be kind and slow down because I tend to go way too fast. I'm like, and Angela, she's a little speedy too. I know. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Okay, we, so that was point number nine. Motion yes. was made by Laurel and the motion was written correctly though. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. And it was okay. seconded by you, Cindy. Got yes. it. And I move to accept the minutes from August 20th with the correction. Great. All in favor to uh, approve the minutes from August 20th. Aye. 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 Um, Aye. All in favor we, is We a need aye. a second. We need a second. Yeah. Please. Holly seconded a long time ago, but we didn't get that. Aaron, you got that? Yep. Thank you so much. Okay, now we can do an all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Excellent. Minutes have been passed. Um, so now we are at the point where let's talk about some great projects that we've got going. Um, public Do we have any additions to the agenda, though, first? Oh, great. Sorry. No problem. I always skip that part because I'm like, we don't need any additions. <laughs> Marsha, do we need to add, um, oh, no, I guess that would be under new business. I don't think there's any, I don't have any additions. I'm set. Miss Marsha, do you? Yes. I don't have any new business. Is that was that the question? No, any additions and you could also include that in new business if you wanted to. Okay, no. Okay, thank you. Great. All right, so then let's go ahead and move on to um, our public art projects. Um, our first item is art on the move 2020. Miss Angela. So Eileen very generously went around today to the locations and has put the labels on. We are still waiting for Annette Coleman to finish her piece and have it installed. Uh, her date was the middle of this month and I think that she's on target, which is good. Um, honestly, I have not started to take photos or start on the postcard. So if anyone is agreeable and is savvy to take lovely photos of pieces and to help me with the graphic design or even just to get the photos done, um, I would be very appreciative. I, so can, I can help with the photos. And I can help with the graphic design. That would be amazing. I have the template from last year. Um, Cindy, what program do you work in typically for graphic design? Um, it, you can just send me the photos and I can do it and send me the template. I can work okay. it out. Okay. 
Um, and you can just call me and let me know where you want me to go, and I'll take pictures. Great. I will then work with or you. email me. Offline. You don't have to call me. Okay. Yep, I'll send you a map and a template, and we'll work on that. Thank you. I just, it's one of those things I just haven't been able to get to, but really once no the Coleman piece is installed, it would be nice to get that. Um, Which piece is that? Way. Which piece is that? It's for Art on the Move. It's so it's for um, the pieces that are all around town. Yes, I understand that. But which is the piece that we're waiting oh, for? Oh, the Annette Coleman is the piece that uh, we had com uh, basically it's commissioned. Uh, so so we it approved it prior here. to its fabrication. The stained glass piece? Yes, the stained glass kind of, it's called Whirling Dervish Transcendence. Yep. It's really lovely. So um yeah i haven't heard exactly when we're going to install that but it'll be moments away so if we can where, get the graphic design done so we can just pop in the photo that would be amazing where is that one going to go i think that it's going to go in saint stephen's unless we can get the jester's owner agreeable to put it on the plinth that's in his easement but so Scott, Scott and I are really good friends. You should email okay. me outside of this, and I will talk to him. Okay, so yeah, let's yeah. talk that's, offline. That, that that's one. pretty much a done deal. I can okay. guarantee you. He will help I, us, okay? He has to sign an easement, though. There's a little bit of paperwork before that can happen. Okay, we'll but, talk offline. Okay, sounds good. Angela. So I will talk to, for Aaron, um, I will talk to Cindy and Pamela. Uh, regarding getting the graphic design done for the card and I will okay. talk to Amy about Scott I mean about Scott yes, and Mary Lou Scott. yeah Scott Scott yeah. is like the maintenance guy and Mary Lee Mary Lou runs the show okay Angela yes once I get the pictures it should literally take me less than an hour especially if I have a template be still my heart Okay, sounds good. Angela, <laughs> hey, do you have a sheet that says the location of all of the art in the moves? I do. I don't think do I have, have it. Can I, can, can I get a copy? Just, I would love to see them. Yep. Me too, please. Yeah, I'll just share this with the group. Animal. Yeah, and say, send it to everybody. That'd be awesome. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, and thank you, Eileen, for getting those labels up. That's awesome. Um, Shock Art 2020, two of the boxes are finished. So as you are driving north on Martin, about to go through the roundabout off of Ken Pratt on the north side to go to Taco Bell to get your tacos, or continue on, uh, you will see actually a really, really lovely piece by Stevie Worst uh, Lawrence. It's the kind of Van Gogh, Starry Night looking uh, Rocky Mountain Sunset. So it's a real oh, yeah. location. Mm -hmm. So I good job, task. Shock Art uh, Commission and Task Force, because you guys uh, looked at those and I had kind of placed them and then you rearranged them a little bit. And that was a really smart move. That was a really good location for that piece. And then the other one is Patrick Pear's work called Long, um, Long Live Longmont. And that is mm -hmm. Whole Foods parking lot um, just south of Sleep Number. Uh, Peter, were you able to go and take a peek at that one? Yes. I, out? I sent you pictures. Did you not get them? I just haven't gotten there yet. Did it look it's good? It's on to email. Okay. I drove past both of those today. The one at... Uh, in the mall by sleep number looks even better than it did in the box. I thought it had been changed from the prototype, but I went back and looked and it looks even better. It looks fantastic. Little oh, scenes from Longmont really on every great. side and you can tell where they're from. It was excellent. Awesome. Angela, I do have, I went by and saw the one um, at Whole Foods also. And I had one concern okay. um, and, and maybe I'm like, Oh my gosh, you stupid art person. That's part of art <laughs> or something. Um, but I do have a question about it. And that was on the panel that faces the South. <clears throat> I think it's a, 
um, illustration of people along the river. Um, and there are several men in it. And one of the men, and I, I don't know if he was like making a definition of his chest, but it's like a cross um, on him. I don't, and the other men don't have it on. So I, I just didn't know what to. Hey, Susan, would you send that to Angela and I? Um, can you open that up more? No, I yeah, don't think it's on. that one. So you could, I'm, I'm can we make it? I'm showing it on my camera. Yes, that's him. You got it. Yep. Peter got it. Yep. That's his um, breasts and chest hair. Okay, okay. I said could be a stupid question, but oh, aren't we all now so aware of every little minute thing? We are. And what if um, a woman were to do that? Might be a question. So I, I was just, you know, it wasn't like right, wrong, or anything. It was just a comment. Um, I would like to know how the commission feels about it. I think it's fine. I can't. I, I do too. I'm going to blow it up here for us all to look at just so we can all be sure. Just give me a second. And Peter, you're awesome for th sending those yeah, that's photos. It's really awesome. Thank you, Peter. So Thank I you. would just like you, I would like to pull a note and you know, this is where Amy's going to go and I will be very professional about it. But if it were a woman, would you be okay with it? I guess I don't know what's like wrong with open the heart cross to star. begin with. So. I'm totally fine with it. I just wanted to, I, it just, I, it jumped out at me. So. Thank you for sharing. That's a really great point. With a, you know, um, um, you know, when my kids can't find something with my husband, can never find anything. I always say, you didn't use your mommy eyes. So I was totally just using my mommy art eyes. I'm fine with it. I'm but I just want to make it. sure the entire commission is. Can everybody see that? Yeah, yeah. it's great. That's great. <laughs> to me, it just looks like an artifacting of the way this person does their art, and I have no problems with it. Thanks, Noah. That's great, great stuff. I think the, you know, the, the, there's always the way to uh, assess. And so if the reporter Harold came to you tomorrow, of course, the first thing you do is say, you know what, I need to speak to my administrator and I'm happy to give you a quote. But then after that, and you have to think about what you're going to say, like as long as we all feel, you know, cohesively that there's, there's justification and understanding for this aesthetic and, and, and what is presented here, that it's good to go. So it, Sounds to me like everybody is on the same page. Does that sound right? You know, it's funny. Yeah. Um, sidebar is just that I would be more offended by the woman and her placement of her um, <laughs> clothing than I would of the man, which is so sexist of me. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Very, very, very good. I would have I'm, missed that. I'm mm -hmm. very offended by these stickers that are obscuring the view of the Yeah, message. mostly those. Mostly those. It's, right. I'm, he's I'm, working on a six-pack, and he's only got two so far. Susan, oh, did you want to make it a motion, or are we all okay with this? It, I'm, I'm fine, fine with, with it. it. It was just that I went and observed and looked, and it was the only thing I noted that, you know, jumped out at me otherwise. And I have, and I have no problem with it. I just thought... It was relevant at this time to that's a great least, point great point thank you point. so much i think we do need to look at things like that that makes me really happy that everybody's looking at stuff like that any other comments on that because that's a really great point thank you susan okay i think this is union reservoir okay well great then if it and nobody has any comments on the that, uh oh, I just lost my shock art uh, email. Uh, Angela, give me, um, I have to open everything up again. So, what's our next topic? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to open everything up again, too. Isn't that funny? I don't know why that happened. 
Oh, I just, I, I had something on my screen and then I so major. rid of it. Okay, here we go. So from that, we are on to the direct purchase of Ursa Major, and I am so excited to let everybody know that today we poured concrete in the fire for Ursa Major, Yay. and a forklift is on its way, and we didn't have to move irrigation, which was a really big deal. I know you don't worry about those things, but um, pipes and electrical downtown is kind of a funny thing. So um it's a little off center but nobody will notice unless you really know um because you're looking at irrigation boxes so um speaking of that installation is scheduled for two so my fork the forklift comes monday um and then tuesday morning we're going to have the artwork arrive probably between 9 and 9 30. so if anyone is excited about not only coming to be present for that installation but also um, used bookstore is right there. And the owner is a little concerned because on Tuesdays between nine and 10 is when they have their um, uh, compromised um, customer access time. And so sometimes those people want to pull into the alley, get really close to the door and things like that. And we're gonna be super safe, of course, with cones and people, but the more hands on deck with that kind of thing, the better, just to make sure that someone's not walking behind a forklift or if we have to, we're gonna inevitably end up navigating through that space. So again, if you can imagine the third uh, alleyway on the east side between third and fourth, between Main and Kimbark, and then the breezeway is kind of a tight little turn. So chances are what's gonna happen is the trailer will pull up, uh, the artwork will be offloaded in the middle of the alleyway, and then the forklift will go around the block into the parking lot and come in through Los Arcos, pick the piece, set it on its side, and then move into the breezeway, and then we'll open the alley back up for normal business. So it's a little bit of a dance. Um, the other thing is just getting images of this work, I think is really powerful, especially on social media and to explain to, for people to see this in action, because a lot of people just say, you know, one day it wasn't there and then the next day it is. And how does, how does that happen? So um, if commissioners are available to come and take photographs of that and also do a little bit of safety and Miss Angela, will you send us the dates again? I know you've yep. done it, but send us the dates and when you need us, that would be really Yeah, great. so this just firmed up. I'm not joking, at four o'clock today, um, the stars aligned. So um, it's Tuesday, the 22nd, so this upcoming Tuesday um, at nine o'clock. And so I will send it to you. And if you're able to make it fantastic, um, if you just wanna pop by even for five minutes, that's fine. Or we'll share all of the details with you later. So, um, so Angela, why don't you send an email and then you you might get a good response to see who can who can come. I know sure. I teach at that time, so it's it's hard for a lot of us who are working. I know. Uh, I can definitely. I can do it. I can. Okay. I'll be hey, there. I'm putting it on my calendar. Okay. okay, great, great. Does anybody have Tuesday, any questions or comments about Ursa? No, I'm excited. Um, explain again exactly where it's going. I've lost track over the time. No, that's okay. Yeah, we've only we've only looked for seven different <laughs> yeah. the one. So, um, so if you are on Main Street on the east side, um, at Third, and you are walking north and you get to the breezeway between used books and Jensen guitar. Okay. It's going in this little tiny um, uh, flower box that used to hold a tree and the tree died. And so there's no tree and there's no planter. So uh, it's a really, it's a really excellent location. It's highly visible. And it's at, so it's on, on Main Street, but within the breezeway. 
because no, the books I, are up. Now I remember. I just couldn't remember exactly yeah. when, where it ended up landing. I yeah, mean, I knew it was somewhere around there, but I wasn't sure exactly. So Yeah, thanks. and we're having to load it and everything, of course, from, from the alley because the, of the barricade situation, right? So um, we're kind of having to take the, the, long, the long road, but that's okay. So it'll be good. Okay, so I will send, um, and Laurel, thank you. Pamela, I heard you too. Um, I'll yeah. send you a note out. And any, really, anybody who wants to be there to help keep the uh, place safe and also answer any questions, uh, that would be great. So I will send you that. Um, Sounds great. That way. All right. Great. Any other questions about that, everybody? No. I do have a question. How long do you think the installation will take? Um, offloading, barring any, <laughs> barring any, you know, trouble should take between 30 and 45 minutes. Um, and then the installation itself, uh, probably two to three hours. Once the piece is set, um, it'll, we'll look at it and we'll orient it. And then they'll have to place where the anchors go. So it's called a, it's called a dry fit. So you set the sculpture, we put where the anchors are, and then they have to pick it up again. And then that's when the fun starts. So then they have to drill into the concrete, set the anchors, put the sculpture back on. And then we, then they just wait around until glue dries. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Um, and then once that epoxy is set, then it's finished. Um, but the, the actual setting of it, probably like an hour, hour and a half. So we're talking like nine to noon. Yeah. Cause I don't know if I'll be able to make it at nine, but I'll, I can, I, there's a window of opportunity there. Yeah, we should, we should be done by one. We should be off site by two. I mean, done, done. I will have to leave at 1130 cause I have physical therapy. So yeah. Pamela, why don't, anybody who has conflicts or issues, go ahead and email those directly to Angela so she can do some right. planning around that. Yeah, um, but show up if you can and you don't have to be there perfectly on time, just within the window is great. So I'll, I'll send an email. Thank you, Angela. Yep. So we, from what I can see, we are on to um, Tony Ortega's uh, mural project. Yeah, so you all should have received with your... Um, uh, packet the invitation not only to share the community mural project but also to sign up for volunteering and I know a number of you have so thank you very very much uh, really what it's going to be there's two shifts there's a morning shift and an afternoon shift and the dates are tomorrow the 18th Saturday the 19th and then next weekend Friday the 25th and Saturday the 26th and so you'll show, as a volunteer, you'll show up a little bit early. We're gonna set down some drop cloths. We have um, sidewalk chalk that we're going to block off where each of the panels are for people to go and to paint. And uh, we'll be filling little paint buckets, checking people in, uh, giving them their sets of paintbrushes because everybody's gonna have their own set of paintbrushes, their own um, aprons and such so we're you know we're keeping it safe by not sharing tools etc and they'll just take those home with them um, and then in between shifts we'll sanitize and clean it all up and then we'll do it again in the afternoon so um, we were a little slow on signups and then we uh, threw out an all staff um, and it's just gone gangbusters so that's really great if you have people within your own community who are really excited about this or particularly if they celebrate uh, Dia de los Muertos, uh, if they're of a per certain, you know, population that that really is uh, a part of their, of their annual celebration. The reason that Art and Public Places commissioned this piece is in celebration and commemorating the 20th anniversary of Longmont um, in this community. So um, yeah, it's been really well received. Times Call is gonna come and do an article um, so as commissioners, if you're available to volunteer for these shifts, that would be really, um, really impactful. Yeah, Noah. Uh, where, I have the time down. Uh, I forgot where the painting's going to be happening. It's at the museum, outside in the courtyard. And luckily we have 
good weather. So we're going to be outside, masked and socially distant. As far as you know. So two things just really quickly. Somebody I know did sign up and what she said was that it didn't specifically tell her where to come to, the location, and that when she signed up, all of the information was in Spanish and she's a, not a Spanish speaker. So I'm not sure if there's a, if she was supposed to select English and it gave her Spanish or I'm not sure what happened. So. Okay, um, do you know when she is scheduled to, to paint? Is it tomorrow? I think she's scheduled Saturday. I think that's okay. okay. I just wanted to just give you the heads up for other people. If other people are having trouble knowing where to go, that, that might okay. be. Um, um, this is my first time using this sign up. Um, I like it a lot. And yes, you can. There's an opt in for Spanish and English. And we really did um, the invitation and everything in Spanish first and then translated it into oh. English. Um, I am not also a Spanish speaker, so that's really difficult, but I think it was um, an important way to approach this project. Yeah. So uh, it's been challenging, but needless to say, um, I will send, it has the option of sending mass emails out to everyone who has um, signed up and I write that. So um, I'll send that out first thing in the morning, thanking people for signing up and then giving specific direction on location. Cool. Nice. How many do we have so far? Do you have any idea? So there's only 32 maximum spots. And I, I think that the last time I looked when I ran the report was we were at 73%. Uh, the other option is that if there's families who want to participate, because they're on panels, we have the ability to spread the panels out and make, you know, give lots of space. And um, since we can be outside, we can do that. So um, 73 percent of 32 whatever that is so yeah we're nearly there we're really really close plus volunteers and staff will be on site as well so yeah all right well and Tony's really excited he's a uh... yeah oh I should show you the sketch so initially I've got to close my agenda Amy <laughs> um he had sent us uh, the sketch of what he had done in pastel, but obviously because it's a community mural, um, you know, we have, it will change depending upon what the community decides to put in texture and such. So I know this is a little funny and bare, but I think you'll get the gist of it. Um, oops. So can you see that? Yeah. Isn't it great? So it yeah. has the it has the tables and dancing with the dresses, mariachi and family. But then of course that it has the uh, ancestors who ha so you have an ancestor dancing, but then you have a live dancer. So everyone's at the table. And so he uh, is bringing his sketches that are colored in um, as and then Tony will be with all of the painters going through and showing them their inspiration bringing the paint in the palette and uh, but there's a lot of room for interpretation so it's just, it's really exciting and then uh, after the work is done we will the museum staff will install it um, at 439 Main so it's on the north facing um, external wall of the breezeway between fourth and fifth on the west side. And the easement agreement that the owners of the building and I came up with was that it will absolutely 100% be there for a full calendar year as of um, installation date. And then after that, um, if at any point they decide that they want to redevelop the building or um, any variety of the, sell the building or something like that, because they're on panels, then we can remove them and move them to a new location, which actually is really smart because then instead of just a new owner coming in and not liking it and painting over it, we 
we can retain it. So it becomes a part of the collection. Nice. Um, Very good. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I need to go for a minute. There's an ice cream man outside. Okay. <laughs> get some for me. Get no, some get me, me some. Hurry up, get me some. I think we live close. All right, great, great. Thank you so much, Angela. So for How big are the panels, Angela? Six, six by four. So the entire length is 20 feet. So the, it's 20 by six. It's significant, quite large. Yeah. Okay, is it, is it high? Are we mounting them up high? Um, yes, it will be, I'm trying to remember the exact height. The, the bottom should be a, at about eye, average eye height. And um, and that building has a has a ledge, um, and so the owner was talking about lighting. It's not in our budget, but some up lighting or even to tap in and have something overhanging and looking back at it and lit from above would be nice. But that's their investment. Great. Okay, so it looks like we can move on to our next item. Is everybody okay with that? Angela, I just want to thank you again for your hard work on this. I know you were just doing double time on that, so thank you so much. It's, it, this one really came about actually pretty organically. So, um, yeah, the, the, the Tony Ortega has been really a great project, so that's, that's good. Well, we're totally grateful to you. I am. I don't know. I'm sure everybody else is, too. Thank you. So, um, it looks from what I can see that we are moving on to the Unity Project. Um, Angela? Yeah, so um, when, when Noah gets back from the ice cream man, <laughs> Noah actually signed up for maintenance on the Unity Project and I think ran into Mario while, Mario Echevarria while he was working on the remediation. And uh, yeah, so I, not to put you on the spot, Noah, but do you want to talk to us a little bit about running into Mario? Yeah, it was uh, pretty interesting. I was just taking my dog for a walk and, um, you know, he had all of this stuff set out. He was doing some really good work there. Basically replaced a lot of the broken plaster along the bottom of the piece and a couple of little bits of mosaic and tile work that were not looking so great. Um, and then it looks like a, a fresh coat of paint on the kind of the outside and especially around the bottom. But it all looks really good. I can't, I don't know if there was any work done to the the green glass panels on the back and like where all the handprints are. But um, for the most part, it, it looks, uh, it's definitely much improved than it was, you know, a couple weeks back. Cool. Isn't one of those uh, green panels on the back broken or missing part of it? Yeah, some of them are, are chipped, I would say. They have like bits, you know, about that big missing from them. Um, but I don't know what it would take to, to recreate whatever those are even made of um, to, to make new ones and put them in the place. No, you can't just put in a portion because it's the whole thing is a tear. Sure, yeah. yeah. I noticed that. I was by there just the other day and noticed that. So. But yeah, other than that, like, it, it, it really looks good now. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks great. So Mario is going to come to us with the second portion of the, so um, if you'll recall, the funding for that really was for stabilization. So he went in and used epoxy on the inside, stabilized the structure itself, and then eventually we need to get the city uh, to put a curb, a lawnmower curb around it so the lawnmowers don't continue to bash into the bottom of it. But then um, some sort of sealant, uh, Mario has played with a number of different materials. It's uh, the mosaic piece that Susan Daly will come back and she will do. Um, the back side, it really is a trick. Um, there are bilingual panels uh, that are um, say what the project was and who was working on it in 1998. And the relief portion of it in some places is just gone. Um, so I when Mario told me he was going over there, I asked him to put together a second portion of the bid to work on that backside and then to do the sealant to keep the mosaic tiles in place. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, Mario has an um, older family in Longmont and he's, he's a Longmont uh, resident and native. 
Uh, so I don't think that we'll see that this fiscal year, but certainly to consider for maintenance in 2021 for sure. So um, yeah, but that's great. Thank you, Noah. No problem. Okay, sorry. I was trying to look and, and mute myself. Um, it looks like we're going to talk about the little Alpine project that has been our topic of discussion for two years. So I spoke to Pat Milbury and his uh, partner in Sonar, um, and uh, they said that they were going to send a sketch, but in fact brought up something that was even bigger, which is that the person who um, did quite a bit of graffiti um, has been bothering them on social media and via email. And so at the request of both Patrick and, and working with my division managers, we're going to go through the city um, mediation process to see if we can open some lines of communication and understanding. So um, stay tuned, but Patrick is still agreeable to finishing the project this fiscal year because he needs to, because his contract says he needs to. Um, but yeah, that, that's, uh, it's really unfortunate and it's disturbing and it's disappointing. So, um, Patrick just wants to feel safe and wants, uh, to have our community really understand what Ninth and Alpine is all about. Um, is so that, yeah, that's the that. same person who whitewashed, Ginger, is that the same person who whitewashed, uh, a lot of the inside of the wall or was it different stuff? No, it's that person. who coincidentally participated in its original painting in 2018. I thought the so, whitewash was from where the graffiti was removed. No. No, that was some weird vandalism. So it's really disappointing. My uh, conversation with Patrick, uh, it was pretty heated and uh, he's, he's pretty disturbed and um, he and I spoke about the necessity for the Longmont community to fix this and make it right because that is a conduit for the kids that are going to school and that's the reason that that project was done in the first place so we need to get it painted we need to get it finished and whatever we have to do to get moving is what we need to do to get moving so uh, mural committee, which I know um, you've been waiting for a sketch for some time, but if this is what it takes to get get going, is uh, that's what's going to happen. So, Miss Angela, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, so, <coughs> well, you don't want me to ask you anything, yet. but I would say that um, would this fellow be willing to come? I know, and this is something that back in the old days, I think Randy might remember this. Um, would he be willing to come to talk to us um, in a public invited to be heard? Uh, Patrick, the artist, or the, um, per both. Or the person? Um, both. Or is that something that we don't even want to go? Can I say something, guys? Please. Sure, Laurel. Okay, uh, because I don't have, I, I can't see you. I can only see Amy, actually. I, I, push something and I don't know what well, it's I your did. lucky day Laurel okay <laughs> so so uh, I just completed uh, the minorities training program um, through uh, the friends of the Longmont Museum and so I just did the diversity training and I uh, you know I haven't gone over it here to, to tell you but it would be great um, to meet possibly, you know, come right up here and, and see, because, because inviting a minority person, there's a lot involved, you know, a, a lot of understanding on our part of where they're coming from and stuff that, um, that we went over in this 
uh, training and it was really great. I'd love to share it with you and I, I can do it tomorrow uh, or whenever you can do it. I think you you bring a valid point up, Laurel, and this is something and you all know and I got in trouble, but this is like something that has been near and dear to my heart for probably 40 years out of my 49. Um, <laughs> now it's really, it's really important to me. Sure. And that's why I joined AAIP. Um, so I won't go into that, but I would like to see if there's anybody who would value that. I know this is a dangerous call. So I don't want to bring it up or bring it up to a vote, but I would like you to circulate it in your brain a little bit and say, hey, should we listen to this dude? Should we like talk about it? And if that's not the case, then that's cool. Um, but I do think it's valuable to like, this is why we started this whole mural campaign because we wanted people to have a voice um, that didn't have a voice. And I live in that area. It's probably, what, two blocks from my house. And I watched it get done. I participated. And then I watched it get vandalized. So I should just back up just a little bit and make sure to um, state very clearly that this person is not of a minority. Um, no, he's not. He's not at all. No, so 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 that that conversation I think is. Um, but I would like to say, are we sure he's not of a minority? Is he um, just because his skin is not brown? Are we sure? Um. So. Uh, the Con considering yep. the person has caused thousands of dollars in damage and then threatened the person who made the art in the first place, I'm not really interested in hearing what they have to say. Okay. So Thanks, Noah. That's. Great. I have a question. Yes. My question is, does this person, Vandal, does he think that it's the, it's Patrick, the artist who accused him and took him to court? Or does he realize it's the city? It's not the artist at all. So I need to be really clear here in that um, what I know as fact is the artist has told me and uh, the artist has not presented me, nor given me, nor uh, the city of Longmont Police Department any of the information other than exactly what I said, which is that um, they, the artist and the vandal, have had conversations outside of the city and that the artist would really like to have assistance in communication. That being said, it's really very important here to say that the city is not able to offer restorative justice through its systems at this point in time because it is exactly to your point, Cindy, um, the city who was the victim of the crime and this person was tried in county court. So, um, so. Well, I just wonder if he's threatening the artist because he is just completely doesn't understand who accused him. And so that's why the city opportunity of a mediation and, co and um, communication is real. It will be very, very helpful. And that's what the city can bring to the, to the table um, to make sure that everyone is of that understanding. Okay. I have a Aaron, quick question. Yeah. Is there anywhere I can kind of get up to speed on what you guys are talking about? I'm kind of getting the gist that this person was sued or where I could find where all of that happened. We'll have a conversation offline. How about? Okay. Okay. Hey, Aaron, you can call us. How's that? Okay. Sounds good. Um, no, it's, it's very complicated and I always want to have everybody's voice be heard, but I totally with, um, Noah on this. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm the, um, diversity person but yeah okay so let's so, move on how's that so can i just add one thing sure my friend can i just add that if there's any opportunity for us to understand why it happened it might help us to prevent it from happening to future girls and so that's why i brought it up in the first place that's why i said should we hear this guy out because I've seen his pictures, I've watched the video, I know who he is. I don't know, no, but um, 
I don't know if he'd be even willing to do it. No. Maybe that's something Angela and a few of us need to talk about offline. Maybe he would hear a voice and he would be like, feel more accepted because you know, he has probably got followers. Um, I so think the mediation is a great idea and I'm glad the city's willing to step up and help us out in that. Yep. Great. And I think that also recognizing the number of different factors here, again, um, that, that going through the channels is really important. Laurel, just to mention, I think one of the things that the Friends of the Museum has done, and this is off subject of um, Ninth and Alpine, but still within, uh -huh. uh, going to the strategic plan process, and uh -huh. the Friends made a commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion. Right. Uh, and they actually made a pledge as a board uh, yeah. So maybe we can look to, and Laurel, maybe you might be agreeable to ask the friends and Jennifer exactly what their pledge is and what they said. And as a board, making a commitment uh, might be something that can solidify what Amy is saying and has been saying for some time uh, about our voice within the community. Uh -huh. I think the strategic plan uh, makes a good, is a really good place for that to be. Well, I, I, I'd love to talk with you about it. We can do that offline so that I understand what it is, uh, what your expectation is, so I can, I can translate that. Good. This is something that I've thought about, and I won't take much of your time, but maybe we should form a subcommittee on this. The guy's not worth it. What? The guy's not worth his time. I, I just don't think... He'll, he'll do it. I know, I know. It's, it's the mean me. I just hope that we don't say that people aren't worth it. We don't know that. No, I, I'm, I'm saying it's not worth your time. Well, thank I don't you. think you'll get anything I out of it. I appreciate your point, Pamela. Thank you. And, and I know. the city has a uh, has a uh, established uh, conduit for this process, and that we don't have to create it um, is real. We're really very blessed that way that we have somewhere to go um, that can be a, a neutral party. So that's great. Yeah, Alex. Uh, Peter has a question. I, I have a question about this, which is if if this guy is threatening the artist and making the artist feel unsafe. Is yeah. there a risk that if we get involved, that then we become targets for him as well? It's a great question. So luckily, the mediation process is independent of uh, art and public places. Uh, it will really be that the city, so Patrick as a contractor with the city, has this uh, as an option um, to solve the issue. So it's independent of me. Um, and, and so then whatever, uh, decisions that they come up with, um, how to move forward, um, is, is, is up to them. So that's the place. I think to me that it actually ends up being a very safe and good solution, um, because it, it takes care of the root of the problem, not anything beyond that. Well, it seems to me the prudent thing is to just leave it like that and not get involved. That Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. One way or the other, we got to get that uh that underpass painted, and so that is my job, and I will I'm gonna get it done. So, uh, meantime, there will likely be at some point uh you know shifts where in the middle of the painting when it's happening that we'll have commissioners who feel comfortable to come and be there and answer questions to the community as it's being repainted. So. Um, I expect that this work will happen at the end of October, beginning of November at the latest. Uh, the weather has to be good for the paint to adhere to the primer. So there's weather factors as well. Thanks, Angela. Any other questions or comments? I know your heads are spinning, as is mine. So, um... Yeah, it's a, it's a struggle. This is a difficult conversation. So I want to thank you all for being so engaged in um, talking about this. Um, this is something that 
is near and dear to me and I know most of you as well. So thank you so much. Um, and if to end on a positive note, the work that the mural committee has done in looking into sealants, working with the graffiti specialist with the city and feeling confident in the way that we are going to move forward when we commission murals is really very positive. It's just that it's taken so long to get this one done. And I think that Noah can agree with me on this and I don't want to speak on your behalf, but but that we aren't going to move forward with any mural sealants until we see how the product that we are committing to works on this one. Great. And if the product that we're, we're committing to works on this one, then any mural that we do going forward is going to be protected and we're not going to have this problem anymore. Yeah, uh, so if graffiti or, or anyone decides to go in, then we just wash it off and, and put it, it, it's really going to save us a lot of, Headache and heartache. So this and is money and money. Yeah, and money. So it's not Ms. all. Laurel, look, um, I, Miss Laurel, I think you had a question or comment. No, no, I, I'm agreeing. <laughs> Are we Very going good. to use the sealant on the Tony Ortega panels? Um, it's a little bit nodding, different yes. because that's on wood. But yes, we will never commission a mural again that isn't sealed because we've learned yeah. our lesson, right? Yes. Okay, once again, I'm going to give her praises, but Angela, thank you. We need that. Thank you, Angela. We yeah. were like, this was like, we wanted to do this so bad, and we couldn't because we were like afraid, and what you just said was, anybody else want to give her a high five? Well, it's high five. expensive to do. It's expensive to do, but you, you know, you, this commission committed uh, last last at the end of last year to the dollar figure for to seal it up and it's you know it's not cheap but um those dollars are for this uh ceiling so you're in good shape but if you want to talk about maintenance don't get ready we'll get there we'll get there so we we're on the new moon five raven swanson all right here you go so thanks to everyone who has signed up for maintenance sent in pictures to address things, I'm going to share it. Ready? Ready. Ready. Here it comes. So this, oh, is the state for dinner. of New Moon 5, which is outside of the, the museum. Um, so as you can see, the... The surface itself is starting to delaminate. I'm not exactly sure the, uh, the media. I think it's some powder coating. But what will likely need to happen is the artist, um, I'll contact the artist to see about coming in, bringing in a grinder, a sander, getting rid of some of these excess flakes where moisture is getting in. And Angela, I don't think we're seeing the, the same screen. Are you not seeing it? Can you go back in? Uh oh. I can see. Can you see it? <laughs> I can Hold see on. it. Boop. Boop. I don't see anything, so. There we go. That's it. Yes, that's it. Oh, that. You see that? Yes. Yes. That was it. Perfect. Okay. And Eileen is a, a master of registration and condition, so. Um, correct me if any of my assessments are wrong, but I think that, uh, definitely not supposed way. to look that way. Yeah, that's not supposed to look that way. And, and frankly, the, the, the piece is attached to this, um, footer or, or, a, a plant that's welded. And then this whole thing is attached to a uh, rock. I don't think it's unstable. I, I think that it's, it's um, adhesion, it, it, it's connection points are fine, uh, but certainly the surface treatment uh, needs addressed. So luckily, uh, Revan Swanson, as you know, is uh, local. She's from Denver. Uh, we have worked with her before um, in Art on the Move. So I'm just gonna give her a phone call and see if she could bid this one out. Because as of all the maintenance um, reports that are starting to come back, this one is, is I would say, aside from Unity, which you know we've kind of got that taken care of, 
this one needs addressed. Um, so I'd like to ask the commission maybe to consider um, some dollar figure that you might consider uh, approving if it comes back at that or less that I can move forward before next month, or I can just get the bid and come back to you in October either way. Uh, but I, I do think that addressing that this year, this, this year would be appropriate and we do have funds in, in maintenance. I think we need to wait for an estimate because it kind of looks like a, a welding issue, like the, the welding wasn't properly treated after it was welded on. I know nothing about this topic, okay? I'm just making this up out of whole cloth. But it looks to me, since it's all around the welds, that that's, and I just, I don't know whether you're going to have to de-weld this and redo it or, or what, but I think we need to wait for a bid or we need to at least wait for the, for the artist to say, we're going to have to take this all apart or I think I can fix it where it stands because okay. the difference in cost will be phenomenal. Astronomical. I have a feeling that it's going to be, um, I think this is powder coating. And again, I walked around it after I read Andrea's maintenance report uh, because of course it's outside the museum. Um, I think the, I think the welds are okay. I think this is a, a powder coat, um, which, um, uh, and, and the face, so up, up above looks in pretty good shape. It's the yeah, base. But it's, the, the, it's all around the welds that it's are where water's been pooling. Yeah. And if and she, if she tried to it, weld onto the powder coat, maybe that would make a difference. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Now, looking at this, it all seems like uh, surface rust. I don't believe that it's going to change the structural integrity of the piece. I think you just blast it, sandblast it, or scrub it, and then re repaint it should be fine. Yeah. All right. So I don't know if you can powder coat the bottom without powder coating the top, which would get rid of all the white chalk lines. To or whatever powder coat it, you would have to take it from where it is and like put it in. Uh, in a powder coating booth, uh, yeah. it would be better to just paint it or find another way to finish it. And there's all sorts of marine paints and automotive paints that are, um, at least in Colorado, are replacing powder coat because the sheen and shine or the matte is available. So a lot of artists are, are moving from powder coating for exactly that reason, Noah, that you have to dismantle something, take it, put it in the booth, powder coat it, and then redo oh. it. Yeah. So, um, okay, I will, I'll get a bid on this one um, as soon as possible. And luckily, again, Revan's local, so I think uh, we likely won't have to outsource it at all. We'll just be able to do it locally. We Thank you. And thank you again for those uh, maintenance reports, which I should also say, um, I did inquire with the uh, IT department uh, we're working on a solution, Peter, um, from last month of being able to select something and then it either disappear or gray out so everyone's not signed up for the same thing. It very well may be just kind of a manual list that you look at and say, I want to sign up for these things. These people have already signed up for these works. These are what's left and then go in and sign up. But um, I'm working on a solution. So more, more on that. Did you, get, did you get all the pictures I sent you? I did. I did. It's excellent. And um, yeah, it's working really well on this side of things because I'm able to open up, I'm able to export the reports. I'm able to filter them by their, so that's how I figured um, out this one to go look at because I filtered it by condition and who put that something was in fair or poor condition to look at those ones first and then start looking through the photos to, to assess. So um, yeah, it's it's working really well. Just Thank out you. of curiosity, uh, may I ask, has anybody found anything that's really bad? This this has been the worst one I've seen. Yeah, that was me too. Mine are all been good, and I haven't. Never mind. I'm not going to say what I haven't done because Angela will smack my hand. All right, so I think we can move on. Is that okay, everybody? Yep. Right, so it looks like we are now on to the administrator's report. Miss Angela, what do you have left? 
So um, executive committee is going to be meeting October 8th. And what we will do at that time is go through the budget for 2021. We stayed flat, so that's nice. And of course, uh, because of the COVID magic, uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't spend funds, all the funds in certain line items this year. And that's not surprising. Uh, but our main programs, we are on budget and that's, that's great. Um, not over budget on any line item. So executive committee and I'll go through that. If there is any project that is near and dear to your heart that um, you would like to continue to see move forward, uh, the Boston Bridge project uh, will be one of those. We still have the drain project kind of in, in the wings uh, that didn't move forward so much um, this year, but we knocked a lot off, off the list for 2019 and 2020. The other thing that I will be sending to you after this meeting is the annual report from 2019 that was submitted to city council. And so you can go through that and um, look at our accomplishments. That's actually quite impressive. So um, that is pretty much everything that I've got. Okay, Angela, thanks for doing that. I'm very happy because we used to have to do that ourselves. <laughs> Okay, uh, all right, so we are now on to new business, social justice project, which is Angela. Shoot, that shouldn't have been on there, but um, I think we're tabling <laughs> that for now. Noah, okay. is that right? I think we're all working on that, right, Noah? Yeah, I was hoping to connect with you after the meeting if we can, Amy. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, okay. so great. I don't have any new business. I have business. There's a cute dog right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't see it. My dogs are hiding. If um, we okay. don't see it, we don't believe it, Noah. Well, yeah. Um, okay. So how about commissioner's comments? May I have a quick question? So I saw that they actually started breaking ground on the multi-use building. Um, and I just didn't know if we had heard anything about whether they were going to ask us to assist them with their parking garage structure. Remember that whole oh, yeah. whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, they they haven't reached back out to us, but I would very much anticipate um, them asking for us uh, for a match or a third. Because if you'll recall, I think that they had estimated that project in the realm of what, 90,000, 100,000. Um, and so we, you know, it's very exciting. Um, they have till 2022 is uh, when they anticipate finishing that, um, which is great because that means that whatever kind of project that we could potentially look at, um, could be integrated with the construction, which will save on costs for mounting, et cetera. Um, I can reach out to Kimberly and see if, or uh, Boulder Housing Authority to see if they have an update. But yeah, the fact that they're breaking ground is is big. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Okay, great. Well, I want to say one thing. I am very impressed how engaged everybody has been. Right? I mean, this is hard times and everybody's like staying engaged. So thank you. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, any other comments? I'm just really so, glad we're meeting again. I know that we have, we had so much more, m much momentum coming into this year and it just felt like we were really scooting and moving and now it feels like we almost came to a complete halt but we're we're moving again we're yeah so we're gonna get there um yeah you i kept it moving. moving we're moving you kept if anybody it if you have time to come for the the tony ortega mural really even if you just want to sit back and see it happen, um, or or we are also doing time lapse video, um, but really, I think this is going to be super for our community, and people are really excited. So for them to thank you in person, um, 
yeah, you you made this happen. You really did. So it's a big deal. Angela, you made this happen. Angela, I have a question. I have a question. Um, Why am I staring at Peter right now? I don't know. Angela, is there a way, can we, can our little subcommittee for the uh, Gather the People actually meet in person and go and look at the site and see what's involved with that sculpture? Yeah, I mean, I'm the, supposed to be on that committee as well. Yeah. With you, the yes. bummer about that site is, of course, COVID put the brakes on their momentum too. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So but I'd like to at least go with the whole group, with the all three of us, and examine that sculpture and see what's involved. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's a field, right? There's nothing there yet, but we can get a drawing and go stand out there and look at the where we're talking about. Well, where I, this is something maybe we need to do separately from the, from the regular meeting, but I just feel like we're not moving ahead on that and I want to. Yeah, um, and maybe we need to get a Steve Ransweiler update because um, he's still in the bidding process and he's been in the bidding process for are we talking about the gather the people, the, the mobile? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about um, sister, the sister cities. Yeah. The gap, the gathering spot. No. Yes. Gathering the people and it, at Isaac Walton. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Maybe we can I have, have a, e a group email about that. You, me and Laurel about getting together for that. And um, Andrea. Okay. And so, were you saying that we should, uh, go over to Isaac Walton and look at the ex this sculpture as it exists right now. Yeah. Yes. yes. I think that it's. I think that it's important. Yes, that would for be all of us to go there so that we can ask each other questions about what needs to yes. be done. And then we go after that. We go to Lucille's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, and even if I'm not able to join you. Um, yeah. Uh, or I can bring my two little my two little minions with me. Please, yeah. oh, yay! Yeah. Absolutely, I have no problem with that. Okay. I love minions. So I just posted something just for fun. Um, Art in public places all over the country is doing some weird stuff right now. So I thought you would appreciate this. This is a mural. I love it. That's great. And. Um, you know, I was joking about even if I'm not, I won't get into politics at all, but um, pol political masks, what a collector's item, because it's not going to be that long, but I love this one. So um, thank you all for staying dedicated. Awesome. Oh, and Crush Walls is happening if you're in Denver this weekend and you want to see a bunch of mural artwork. That's where you go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Okay. Gather enough people. I will send Shall you. Shall we move to adjourn yet? I think Angela and Noah and I will probably keep talking for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Adjournment. So okay. I need a I need a motion. Okay, I move that we adjourn. I need a I second. 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 Okay. It is so great to see all of you. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Aaron, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Erica, can I talk to you for a second before we leave? I'm still here. I don't know how to get off. Oh. Do, we, do we need to boot you out? Boot me. Give me the boot. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. Is that Laurel talking, by the way? Boom, I got her. Oh, okay. I was just about to boot her. <laughs> I feel so powerful.
Rah, you are removed from the meeting. Oh, but I only can remove some people, not all people. Not. Yeah. That's okay. You can remove me if you want. I'll come no, back. No, no, no. So, um, uh, Erica, are we good to stop recording so we can still chat? I think so. Is that all right? I mean, I, I guess if it's just Amy and Noah and us, then technically it's not an open meeting. Okay. Or I can like go and make a different Zoom. No, no, no. Yeah, that's I my think only. We question. just need if we kick Pamela out, <laughs> then you don't have enough people for an open meeting, and then. All right, so I'm going to withdraw her co-host, and I'm going to remove. I can make a Zoom meeting right now if it would be easier and more. Nope.